Baseball Classic. You play for your country. WBC action, and we are in Mexico. This is day two of pool play here, and what a matchup. Two teams, two countries who have been great rivals over the baseball years, Venezuela and Puerto Rico. And what a lineup of talent you will see on both sides. Names and faces you are familiar with from the work they have done at the major league level. Now they get a chance to do it for the country on the front of their jersey. Can they equal last night? They'll have to go some to do it. Italy got five runs in the bottom half of the ninth inning to beat Mexico in an upset by a score of 10 to 9. So this is just the second day of pool play here. Our two teams are going to go 1 and 0 in the first two. We're about to find out. Jose Bota, Gary Thor, delighted to have you with us here as we get set to go. We are going to take a look at a team from Venezuela, which in the past feels as though it has not performed up to Venezuelan standards. And the key word here, Gary, is rebound. And they gathered a group of star players once again that not only understood the importance and the pride they needed to do in order to wear the uniform, but guys that knew how to prepare a little bit better. So preparation is a key, of course. They got stunned by getting beat by the Dominican last time out after making it to the semifinals in 2009. Surprise, surprise, all WBC. And they lost against the Dominican. Then they put against Puerto Rico. And even with the star roster, Gary, they just cannot put it all together. And all the players are telling me, we remember that feeling. It stung. We do not want to experience this again. And we know for sure we could be a little bit better. And they will go up against the team from Puerto Rico that did make it to the finals. The Dominican did beat them. They, of course, have a lot of new faces on this team. And somewhat surprising in WBC action, they're talking about defense. Oh, they have some guys, a star-studded infield. A lot of flash. And guys are now with great credentials, young credentials in the big leagues. But proven Francisco Lindor in that gold glove fresh off the World Series. Javier Baez. At second base, or sure, it doesn't matter. He provides a lot of flash to the glove. And Carlos Correa, who said, for my team, I will move over to third base. But here's one thing. They have so much balance just with three guys. They, they're going to help you with the gloves and preventing the runs, but also they have a lot of thump for those bats to provide a lot of offense for manager Edwin Rodriguez. And these guys are looking so forward to being on the same field together. Their manager said, baseball world, take a look. You may not see this kind of defense again. So... Take a look, because we're going to see him on the field tonight. And they've got, as he said, Jose said, the numbers offensively to go with it. Here in Mexico, some excitement with a great game last night. Now wondering, what will we see tonight? Venezuela, Puerto Rico, the great rivalry in baseball that's gone on through the Winter Leagues, now is resumed in the WBC. A beautiful night here at the ballpark 75 degrees partly cloudy skies just a gorgeous evening for baseball. This is what's up for grabs. The World Baseball Classic our class 101. That's where the pool play took place in the first round second round Tokyo San Diego championship round will be in L.A. How do you advance first second round you get the round robin you win two you probably in it gives you a chance to be in for sure championship game uh, round is a single elimination the all important pitch count is a. It is very important as you are going to make decisions based not only on the guy getting you the outs, but also I need to keep this guy eligible to give me depth a little bit later or perhaps come out and give me one or two batters when the time comes thinking about the next day. But with this, managers understand also, Gary, and we understand a little bit more too, how they are building these ball clubs all based on the structure of this tournament. Yeah, the bullpen, the bullpen, the bullpen. You hope your starters are going to be able to give you the three maybe four unlikely but at least three then you throw another starter out there for three more and then you go to your bullpen well then you go to Marco Mazzieri saying I don't have a plan and I'm not going to tell you but if it's going to be a starter or relievers one by one I'll parade them out there and let's see what happens and of course Marco Mazzieri for Italy had it all planned out and it worked out let's take a look at the lineup uh, in this one Puerto Rico is going to be the home team Starting lineup for Venezuela, Jose Altuve, Martin Prado, Miguel Cabrera. How about that for a top three? Carlos Gomez, Victor Martinez, Salvador Perez, Udubo Herrera, Alcides Escobar, and Ender Inciate. That's a potent lineup led by one of the game's greatest players, Miguel Cabrera. And today, I wasn't sure if you're watching batting practice or a home run derby because Seth Lugo has his hands full on this tough team from Venezuela. Take a look at the numbers that Lugo has put up with the Mets. He had his breakout year last year, first year 
in the majors with the 17 game eight starts five and two tremendous ERA of two six seven only 64 innings pitched. now he's not particularly young 27 years old but he's not an experienced major league pitcher and what we will watch for tonight and we'll talk more about it probably than we did last night we are a mile high in the air he is a curveball pitcher will he be able to feel that pitch he will try to find it and to me that's my second point get an early feel for the curveball and then if it doesn't work if you don't have it don't force it in. but he needs to keep those strikes on the edges he is a strike thrower he can work fast he can hit the blacks but also he's got movement but the target the target from his catcher Yadi Molina cannot be low enough because you want to miss slow against Venezuela especially in this ballpark and then miss a little bit lower. We saw the home runs fly out of here last night. It's not unusual for those who follow Major League Baseball. This is the equivalent of Denver's Mile High Stadium. It's just about the same altitude above sea level here in Guadalajara. Ball was flying last night, and the pitchers telling us it is really hard to find a grip. The ball is slippery in this high, thin air. From the release and the feeling that you don't get a natural elevation. A more normal elevation to the spin that you don't get. Yeah. You know, if I, the hitter helps the hitter see the ball a little bit better, say splat over the zone. So let's see if Lugo can find it early, and if not, let's see what the plan is. All right, we are ready to go here in game two in this pool play, and the first game for these two teams in this pool. And Altuve will go after the first pitch, and he will foul it off. And uh, according to what the manager said on both sides, you're going to see a lot of that. These teams are coming in both to be aggressive, as was true last night. Managers are saying 2 1 count, 2 0 count, 3 0 count. Swing, be ready, hit the ball. We've got to put some runs up on the board. They're expecting this to be a run offensive game. I think both of the managers, uh, especially for Puerto Rico. So we'll see if that plays out. Never enough runs. Look at Yadi Molina. Yeah. Just glancing a little, Jose Altuve. Making sure Altuve is not cheating and looking back at him. Lugo's delivery on the way, and that will be taken away for a ball. And the count will go to two balls and one strike. For somebody like Seth Lugo, what better than to have somebody like Yadi Molina calling pitches for you? Mm, not bad at all. Look at the hit leaders, Altuve, Ordonez. They have been up there consistently of late. That one will be fouled off, and Altuve certainly came to the plate ready to swing. Altuve's numbers are spectacular. Uh, Venezuelan born players the single season hit leaders Let's see what he has done 14 and 16 or 2007 2012 you get over that 200 hit mark you're in rarefied air at the major leagues they'll go ready with a delivery to him and that'll be foul back for Altuba, he's proven out through the years you know he ranks so high among Venezuelan players this is one of the best players in all of baseball. Could have been an MVP last year. We're the finalists for the MVP. And he's proven on both sides of the field he is mighty special. American League batting champion, seventh major league season, and he's giving you one of those leadoff performances you love as a manager. He's making the opposing pitcher work right from the get go of the game. And there's one popped up. A lot of foul territory here. Plenty of room for it to be played. Rivera over to get it and Altuve is retired and at least that first battle goes to Seth Lugo. Defense obviously really important as Jose mentioned that it, it's so important for the pitching staff to keep the pitch count down you have good D behind you. Pagan Fuentes and Rosario will be in the outfield. Look at that infield. Correa Lindor Baez DJ Rivera over at first. You got Yadier Molina probably a Hall of Fame catcher to be working behind the plate Seth Lugo on the mound. I mean, you would have to look long and hard for an infield that has that much talent in it. Go back to the Dodgers when they had the infield that lasted forever. Kind of like that. And these young kids are spectacular. Pitches in there for a strike. Martin Prado at the plate. Prado getting the start at third base in this game with the Marlins. Big 305 batting average that he put up. Defense pretty much straight away. It was a breeze blowing during batting practice and just before the first pitch there is none right now the flags are laying limp against the poles out there in uh, right center field and as we said a very comfortable night at 75 degrees It'll be down to around 70 or high 60s timeout asked for by Prado I like this about Lugo. he is trying to just not think too much see the sign throw the baseball and keep the quick pace you got Molina behind there why not right and he will push you to do that again yeah. he likes to have pitchers just you take my sign I'll give it to you throw that thing right back at me let's play catch 
Yachty is as relaxed as you will see anybody behind the plate, but he is also as intense as anybody you will see behind the plate on the way he communicates with the pitchers. 33 year old Prado chases one that's away and he got it for a strike out there two down. We we're just talking about Yachty Molina and leadership and follow me in body language. He gave a outstanding target. Look at, look at Yachty. He said, hey, if you're going to miss, you're going to miss way out here. Look at this. This is back to the Greg Maddox days. Huh? Javi Lopez. Exactly. And what a great reminder for a young pitcher to say, well, my leader's saying if I'm going to miss, go way out there. Look what happened. Good result. Fans give a big hand uh, to Miguel Cabrera. There are many around baseball who have seen a lot of baseball coaches, managers, scouts. Who are willing to say this may be the greatest hitter of all time? Now that's that's a mouthful, but they say it and they mean it, and they do so having thought about it for a long time. Best complete hitter of our generation today, I would say he is. Yeah, I mean that's he is truly spectacular. That one is going to be right around the knees. Real good pitch, Lugo. His manager telling us before the game regarding Lugo that. Even though he hasn't got major league experience, he's always under control. He is always calm. He's got the game in focus, and that's why he wanted him to start this game. There's a real presence out there. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way. That'll be lifted to left field. Line drive, a little sliding catch made by Pagan. So Lugo has an outstanding start. A little help from his D. He retires the side in order. We'll take a look at the lineup for Puerto Rico when we come back, and it too is loaded. The guy who just made that catch is going to be coming up. Jalesco Stadium in uh, Jalesco, just outside of Guadalajara. Jalesco is the state. Guadalajara is the capital. Of Puerto Rico's here. And what a lineup. Angel Pagan, Francisco Lindor, Carlos Correa. Carlos Beltran follows him. He'll be the DH. Yadi Gamalina, Javier Baez, Eddie Rosario, TJ Rivera, Raymond Fuentes in center field. That's their lineup, and it's got pop. It has pop. It also has the ability to steal a base or two once you get on against. The King, Felix Hernandez. Hernandez ready to go, and the fastball will be in there for a strike. King Felix, are they ever happy he's decided to play? There are the numbers. Not a spectacular year for him. 11 and 8, 382 ERA. Pulled back the throttle on that one a little bit and got the foul ball straight back as he was out in front of it. Leading it off. And help Pagan hitting the start in left field. He is a switch hitter for the Giants last year with the 12 home runs, 55 RBIs. Outfield pretty much straight away on him. And he will take the delivery from Hernandez, 30 year old right hander, takes it up. For this ballpark where you look at you keep the ball on the ground so it doesn't get in the air and go out. As far as Hernandez is concerned, pretty much a 50 50 ground ball fly ball pitcher last year. That one is close, but not quite. That was an important point because we talked about the defense. He's got Altuve and Alcides Escobar up the middle, Prado at third, Miggy at first. And you talk about one of the best at throwing ground balls. We mentioned so often Felix and the power and the strikeouts and all that, but he is one of the best at getting the ground balls. And the strikeouts. Put that one in the dirt. It was held on to as uh, he gets a strikeout to start the ball game. For Felix, it's about commitment from the hitters and to have enough separation. And that changeup, it is devastating to the hitters, all because of the outstanding arm sweep that he does possess. But for Felix today, I think that differential, as you saw there, the difference between that fastball and that changeup is a must. Fastball movement over velocity, and he knows exactly what to do with that. And also on base running, He's got to be alert and help his catcher because he does have a tendency to be a little slow and not makes his moves towards the plate. Francisco Lindor, one of the great young stars we were talking about at shortstop. He's never played anywhere else in his young professional career. Goes down to third. Martin Prado is right there. Prado is in about two, three steps on the grass. The ball came right to him. Now Hernandez will get the ground ball out, and there are two away here in the first inning. Here's what this defense looks like. And uh, they've got some guys who can cover some ground uh, in the outfield as well. Herrera, Enciarte, and Carlos Gonzalez. Then Prado, Escobar, Altuve, and Miguel over at first base. Salvador Perez works behind the plate. Victor Martinez is the designated hitter 
uh, in this ball game. You know, on this play here on defense in the outfield, you have six center fielders pretty much, six players. Mm -hmm. They come out there and play center field for a big league team every day. Three shortstops playing at the same time. Think of that. So what a luxury and pleasure to our eyes to yep. see this talent displayed here. Two down, nobody on. Here is Carlos Correa. He is getting the right handed bat in the third base position defensively. That one will miss away, not by much. Little uh, couple of things to watch for coming into today's play in the WBC. If you got four runs, you're going to win. Teams with four runs or more, 13 and four. Coming into play today, there have only been four games decided by one run. And the importance of the bullpen, teams with a lead after four innings are 11 and one. 11 and one if you lead after four. So we'll see if that holds up here. It didn't hold up last night. None of that held up. It did. <laughs> Not even the ballpark held up. No, it couldn't hold it. <laughs> Six home runs. There's uh, Felix trying to brush Carlos Correa off the plate. Carlos with tremendous power to right center field, and of course, every part of the ballpark. Correa is waiting. The two-one delivery on the way by Felix is fouled back. So Hernandez comes back on him with two down and nobody on. This is discipline on your approach. You get brushed off, but you stay with the same approach. You go, hey, I'm not going to be pushed back. I'm going to start looking middle out again because, as Correa understood, it was only a purpose type fastball. 2015 AL Rookie of the Year. Fastball will come inside a little bit. Correa winning that award joins a very select group of Puerto Rican bond players who have won Rookie of the Year. This is Cad Mass right here. Okay, so you're going to be looking away again. Let me push you back again. I will repeat. Here's Correa looking outside and whips. Get out of the way. Now let's see where Perez sets up here. Back inside, down the line, foul territory. Top for a souvenir for a fan. I absolutely love these types of matches. You have the veteran. You have the young superstar. The young superstar who can really drive a baseball. Has seen a lot of video. Has yeah. seen a lot of highlights. And he's going, you know what? I'm ready for one thing. He is going to try to get me out with the off speed. See what he can do here with two down. And that ball is going to go to short on the ground. Escobar has got it. Over to first base. Cabrera is there in a one, two, three inning. So both pitchers start out really as expected with the quality arms that they have. They both get one, two, three innings. It'll be Gomez, Martinez, and Perez coming up. No score after one. Well, we talk about the WBC loaded with the possibilities of upsets. USA still playing their ball game against Colombia. There in extra innings, 2-2. What a great job by Jose Quintana and Chris Archer himself. We talk about mapping out a perfect scenario, pitch count-wise. Quintana threw five and two-thirds innings for Colombia today, 63 pitches. That's uh, Maddox efficiency. Here is Carlos Gomez. Gomez getting the start in right field. Left handed batter will take the off speed delivery in there for a strike. Lugo is a right hander, but he held lefties to a 196 batting average last year with the Mets. 196. The righties hit 240 against him. He only gave up seven home runs. Down to first base. Lugo's going to have to get over there to cover. He does. That's why you break off the mound. He helps Rivera get the out. I can't say it enough. Just on how well the young man continues to follow the big target by Yadi Molina. You talk about this type of swing from Carlos Gonzalez. Look at Molina again, pushing. Hey, make sure we miss out here. So Gonzalez starts to swing and he's only wrapping that around. Just think about if Molina set two inches in a little bit more, that ball's going to get by somehow towards right mm -hmm. field. Yeah. That'll bring up Victor Martinez. He's the designated hitter. DHs in all of the games in the World Baseball Classic. Again, part of that is to protect the pitchers and also to bring more offense to the uh, World Baseball Classic. They put the full shift on against him. Baez is playing the softball right field as the second baseman, and then the shortstop Lindor is pulled around on the second base side of the bag. Maybe he found one of those markers we saw. <laughs> ah, yeah. No more markers, my friend. No, we were. <laughs> we'll, we'll explain that to you who haven't heard about it. There's a new rule for Major League Baseball this year. You cannot put markers on the field. And what players were doing because of all the shifts on different players, they were sticking things into the field, especially the outfield, like 
golf tees all fair. with letters on it to know where they had to play against certain hitters. And some fluorescent ones. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, the new rules say uh, no more. Uh, no more markers on the field. Victor Martinez ground ball right into that shift. That is the shortstop Lindor who makes the play. Victor Martinez is retired and there are two down. So far both of these pitchers able to get some ground ball outs early in the game and that's exactly what they want to do two away. Lugo was just around the 41 42 percent mark with the Mets in terms of ground ball but uh, he is a guy that uh, is not afraid of contact and certainly won that his manager Adrian Rodriguez says he can be quite economical because he can find a way to get some early contact and save me some arms out of the bullpen. Well, that would really that helps any team in this WBC early on. It's a pop up shallow right field. See who's got the angle second baseman. And the play made as Baez comes over and gets it. So a very efficient second inning as the 27 year old right hander from the Mets retires him one two three. Carlos Beltran designated hitter when we come back. There is Edwin Rodriguez. He is the manager of this team from Puerto Rico. He skippered the Marlins for a couple of years, became the first manager from Puerto Rico at the major league level. And he's got this ball club ready to go. And Omar Vizquel on the other side, their manager with the Detroit Tigers, first base coach now, and a, one of the great gold glove players of all time. 11 gold gloves at short. Omar Vizquel skippering Venezuela. And we are ready to go here into the bottom half of the second inning. Carlos Beltran will stand in, go after the first pitch down the line in left field. It is headed towards foul territory, but it's going to be caught. Came back. Herrera had to come over to get it and almost overran the ball as it came back towards him in fair territory. Left handed hitter, of course, you expect that ball to continue to slice on you. And of course, Herrera, who was naturally center fielder, did not expect that ball to cut back. And the way it did, but it does help once again, as we mentioned, to have guys that play center field and, of course, expect the ball to do many things out there. Well, they get the first out on the fly ball. Now, that's for fans. Sometimes we talk about does it really make a difference for an outfielder whether you play in left or right or center? Well, that's one of the things where it does make a difference. The ball comes at you at a different angle in right and left, depending on the hitter. And if you're used to that, you make the play a little easier. That one is taken all the way for a strike. Yadia Molina who is doing the catching whom we have talked about. Molina stands in with a straight up D on him. 0 1 count, one down, no score. Kind of surprising. That's a strike. These teams have only met three previous times in the World Baseball Classic. They've not always been in the same pool. And in those three games, uh, Venezuela's won two and lost one in WBC action. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way. Big cut. And a foul tip. Ended up coming right into Salvador Perez. One of these first 18 pitches, Felix Hernandez pretty much with that sequence that he's shown. Looks like he's pitching in the middle of the season. Five batters, five first pitch strikes. Down to the zone, a few swings and misses, and the ball is moving all over the place. <laughs> Not good news for the hitters. 0 2 count with one down. Molina goes after it, fights it off. It'll stay at two strikes. He has thrown a lot of pitches through the years, and he's in good company. Look at this. Most pitches thrown the last 10 seasons, led by Justin Verlander. That is. Felix with 32,701 pitches made. <laughs> Mercy. Another one fouled off. He has won 154 games, losing 109. His ERA lifetime is 3.16. It jumped up last year from 3.16 to 3.82 with that 11 and 8 year he had last season. Limited to a few starts. I mean, he was on a run. We had 10 consecutive seasons of 30 or more starts. Only made 25 last year, as you talk about, Gary, but because of that right calf strain that held him out. Yep. Ready again to deliver the 0 2 pitch, and he comes in with the eat. Hit it right where he wanted it. Molina goes down, swinging second strikeout for Felix Hernandez. 
Felix the reaction after the visit by his catcher Salvo Perez saying that's what you wanted we got it and he had that fastball once again tying up Molina in knots as he was trying to do to Correa that's a mustard on that one look at this look at his reaction Salvi is that what you wanted got it <laughs> that'll bring Baez to the plate Javier Baez getting the start at second base Escobar short Mm, just got him. There's no video replay on anything except question on home runs, but that was close. But he is called out. So a one, two, three inning. Hernandez has retired the first six batters that he faced. And the infield will remember that when Baez runs, there's some speed, maybe a little faster than what Escobar thought. You make the call. Yeah, it was in the glove. So he gets the one two three inning no score after two. Ready to go here Herrera will stand in. Oduba Herrera who's got good speed. He too first ball hitting. Rivera will make the flip as Lugo gets over there to cover a pitch in and out. Well this infield does present a challenge different layers and the bump look what made this play get closer. Look at this last hop on Escobar it almost escaped right by his left leg able to accommodate and then he's got to rush the throw for Javier Baez but this is what set him back look at this play right here he's got it he's got it and then all of a sudden wait a minute where are you going able to secure it and let's say throw Javier Baez out yeah let's say throw <laughs> here is Escobar the shortstop that was a great hustle by Javi yep Escobar 261 with seven home runs we'll take the pitch we welcome you those of you watching on MLB who are watching the U.S. game against Columbia, extra innings, U.S. coming away with a win on the Adam Jones RBI to take the 3 to 2 victory. Gary Thorne, Jose Mota here in uh, Mexico. This is the second game in this pool, and it's Venezuela and Puerto Rico. No score. We were in the third inning. Seth Lugo is on the mound pitching uh, against Venezuela, and Felix Hernandez on the mound. Pitching against Puerto Rico. Ground ball, that one's going to go to short as well. And the Leasley and a couple of steps in advance of Escobar's Lindor gets it over there. And there are two away here in the third inning. Just like that great game uh, won by the U.S. today. Outstanding pitching by Quintana. Once again, five and two thirds, 63 pitches for Columbia. And then Chris Archer, only 41 pitches through four innings. And Archer had to go get some more work in the bullpen. So what we're seeing here is the youngster and Seth Lugo really executing and expanding those margins off the plate and of course Felix Hernandez being who else but the king they are both throwing a lot of strikes in Ciarte playing in center field and batting in the number nine spot will take the pitch down low for a ball Quinn Walcott is the home plate umpire started in the majors in 2014 we've got uh, Mike Ola who is working out of Spain at first base Dan Bellino major league umpire since 11 is at second and uh, Winfred Birkin, a Dutch umpire, is at third. International umpires will be involved in all games in the WBC, selected from a process over the three years where a lot of scouting went on regarding the umpires. Here's the 2 0 delivery on the way, taking. That one's going to be up, the first 3 0 count of the yeah. game. One thing we've seen through the years, you and I, Gary, is how these U.S. umpires really embrace the opportunity to teach, to mentor a lot of these international hopefuls. 3 0 count is right there for a strike. They take this very seriously and they understand the responsibility they carry. And of course, in, with the tournament, the integrity, uh, the new technology they implement, but certainly what they represent to those that are hoping to get to the major leagues. Yep. Major League umpires choose to come. Now one down to first base, so he came back from a 3 0 count and gets the ground ball. Rivera was there to put it away, and that's it. So the first nine up for Venezuela have all been retired. We'll see whether or not Hernandez could do the same on the other side. Puerto Rico playing here in Mexico. They have hosted the WBC in the past. Capital, of course, is San Juan, 3.5 million. Absolutely beautiful area with lots of beach coverage. Over 500 kilometers of coastline. And the World Heritage Site, the old forts, go back to the 16th century at the end of the beaches in the resort area. Puerto Rico. We've had the pleasure of being there to do games, and I do mean the pleasure. 
They have uh, done a great job when they've had the opportunity to host. Here's a hand. Uh, we've taken a few strolls around uh, the fort. Around the old San Juan. Yep. And as you mentioned, they always do a great job in Puerto Rico yep. when they have hosted. And Mexico's doing the same thing here. These uh, cities are really honored to have the WBC. They go all out for it. Strike from Felix Hernandez. Eddie Rosario making the start in right field. Stand again. Last year with the Minnesota got in 92 games hit 269 had 10 home runs. Season came to the end late September he had a broken left thumb that ended the year for him last year. He just gets the barrel of the bat on that into right field that's going to carry it'll take a hop off the wall. He's going to get a real good chance for three in this one. Gonzalez by the time he gets it's got no play just gets it in a leadoff triple first hit of the ball game Eddie Rosario. And for a guy like Carlos Gonzalez, who of course plays home games where, but Coors Field in Colorado, he was actually fooled, I think, perhaps by the lights or the fact that the ball had not been carrying as well as last night and also by that swing. But Gonzalez did not expect this ball to be carrying this well. And Eddie Rosario with great power, great leverage. Look at this one hand finish. Get that thin air to work for you. You can see the bounce the artificial carpet gives. That ball took a pretty good hop in the outfield to go it off the wall. This is all artificial carpet, even the dirt area, only right around the bases is their real Mother Earth dirt. Pitch taken inside, and the infield's already drawn in. You think these managers think this could be a close ball game? Look at this. They didn't want to start it. When we talked to them, they thought this was going to be all <laughs> offense. They've changed their minds after watching these two starters, I think. That being the first hit, so now drawn in. Adjusting on the fly. Yeah. Rivera at the plate first baseman trying to drive one through here and pick up an RBI if he can with Eddie Rosario getting that leadoff triple. We have already had in this ball game five one two three innings in the ball game last night. We had only six in the whole game between Mexico and Italy. I don't know you were counting those. Well <laughs> it's easier today. <laughs> Somebody get an out. And missed outside. Ball gets away, but not far enough to advance Rosario. Perez got enough of the glove on that to slow it down. There was no way they were going to risk sending him from third base. Well, I've been saying how, how much the ball has been moving coming out of the hand and approaching home plate for Felix Hernandez. And that could be problematic for a catcher, of course, who doesn't catch him on a regular basis. Eddie Rosario just watching the path of the baseball, did not expect that ball to get by that far. Joe Espada, third base coach, immediately drew him back to the bag. Two ball, one strike count. Puts it up in the air. That'll get a run in. That's going into the gap. Left center field almost back to the warning track. Ball starts carrying again. And Ciarte will put it away. Sack fly, RBI. Rosario scores. And uh, TJ Rivera makes it a 1 nothing Puerto Rico lead. Just like that, they capitalize on a couple of pitches up in the zone by Felix Hernandez. Bottom of the order. What a plus that is for any manager to see how they can go out there and also set the tone for you. And you're talking about the ball starting to carry, and you're absolutely right. So is the wind starting at, to yeah, pick up. Look at the flags, Jose. They were down against the post. Now they are unfurled. And the pitch is taken for a ball. Fuentes at the plate. Raymond Fuentes getting the start in center field, so the leadoff triple pays off. Martin Prado way in at third base, a good three, four steps on the grass, recognizing the speed of Fuentes and not going to give him the opportunity to lay down a bunt. Fuentes, Arizona Diamondbacks, his first WBC. Played to some games with Kansas City last year, released the end uh, of the season, signed a minor league deal with the Diamondbacks in December. Felix Hernandez misses with that inside. This is the first 3 0 count that he's had in the ballgame. Only 32 pitches, and 22 of those came in the first two innings. Only eight pitches he made in that second inning. See if he's aggressive on this. He is, and he's going to get a base hit. So we were talking about, both managers said, we're not going to take a lot of pitches in this game. We want some offense. So if we get 3 0 and you can look for a fastball and you get it, go ahead and swing. Especially against Felix Hernandez, who is a strike thrower. He barely has missed and fallen behind on any count. And for Adrian Rodriguez, this is a tip on the manager. That is just good managing. Telling your number nine hitter, 3 0, you don't have to look for a home run, but yeah, you should get your best pitch to hit here this count. Take advantage of it. Right where he wanted it. 
So there is hit number two, still only one away. Here's Angel Angel help Pagan, left fielder. He will keep Martin Prado in at third. Quick throw over to get him back. Prado's not as close on Pagan as he was on Fuentes, only a step in. And there's something that Puerto Rico definitely needs to push with Felix. 16 stolen bases allowed last year, only four caught stealing. But he also has one of the best in baseball in Salvi Perez behind the plate. Pitch on the way at the knees and we'll take it for a strike. Felix has allowed as many as 31 stolen bases in a season. But it takes two. You've got to help your catcher out. See if anything's on here. Chance for all kinds of stuff. Hit and run, run and hit. Lay down a bunt, try for a base hit. Hernandez that set. And trying to drive it down to third, he ends up fouling it back. As he had Martin Prado in, so he was trying to put that ball by him at third base and pick something up. Here are the numbers with the Giants 55 RBIs, the 12 home runs. Lord Pagan. He knows a thing or two about winning and moving on mm. in the Classic. A huge part of their success back in 2013 when they lost to the Dominican in the final game. Again, that's the approach you're talking about. Going the other way. Joe Spadio, the third base coach, didn't get out of the way of that one. Here are the hit leaders. Single WBC. 12 of them in 2013. They call him Puerto Rico. He is the beloved Caballo Loco. Mm. Crazy horse. On help Pagan. Runner not going, Pagan reaching. And couldn't get it. And there's strikeout number three for Felix Hernandez. And there are two down. I think Pagan guessing on fastball inside, at least on a push. Look at that front hit fly open. Once you do that, all the leverage is out. You're done. That's a reach type of swing if you're guessing wrong. Of course, how many guys have guessed wrong on Felix through the years? Most. <laughs> Say so. Yeah. Two away. Runner still at first base. Lindor grounded out his first time up. Francisco Lindor. Again, Martin Prado plays in at third. Ball got away a little bit. Nobody going anywhere. It's hard to tell where the dirt is on this field because that artificial carpet that's on the infield is looks very much like it's real dirt, but it isn't. You can see the difference in the color. You get the real dirt right around the bases on that cutout area. It's an artificial carpet all the way around. And it's quite bumpy at the cutout that you see. There's a big lip for those ground balls to really get up on you. Francisco Lindor, 1 0 count. Runner stays, pitch away. And the count will go to 2 0. A few more pitches having to be thrown here in the third inning by Felix Hernandez. Lead off triple Rosario scored on the sack fly by Rivera to make it a one nothing game. Fuentes with a single. He's still over there at first base. And the pitch is away. Trying to get him to chase those pitches that are down and away. And Lindo's refusing. Count goes 3 0. Oh. Let's see if he'll go after a fastball if he gets one. Jump on it. If their number nine hitter had the green light, <laughs> Lindor has a green light. Yeah. I don't think they even have to look. For a sign. For Salvador setting up. Three always taken. And there's the first walk of the game. And you think about this, Gary. You know, Felix made it a point. He wanted to pitch for Venezuela. Pitched in winter ball in preparation for this tournament. We talked about the importance of guys that understood and Omar Vizquel told us. I wanted guys that really had an idea as to how important preparation was for this tournament. So guys played winter ball. Felix had not allowed a run in WBC competition until tonight. Yep, first time. And he's, I'm not going to say struggling here in the third inning, but this certainly isn't the efficient, quick strikes and outs we saw in the first two. Espinosa comes up. He is the pitching coach. I have a word here and more about just how he feels. Home plate umpire Quinn Walcott will break up the confab and get him back. 
Two down, runners on at first and second base. Fuentes has got real good speed down there at second. Lindor with real good speed on it first. Whereas the infield signs the catcher up in front of home plate before he goes back with Carlos Correa coming to the plate. So this is a big moment. It's an opportunity here for Puerto Rico against Felix Hernandez to pick up another run. It's going to be an important and interesting pitch sequence because he threw Correa a lot of fastballs last time. Correa will take one. It'll be in the outside corner for a strike, and uh, he'll turn and <laughs> ask Quinn Walcott what he had for breakfast. You know, the interesting thing is Correa saying, "I didn't see that before." Starts him off with a slider right on the black. The great framing job there by Sal Lopez. Holding the runner tight, Altuve at second base. Another one. This gun he brought inside, and again. Correa wasn't sure it was a strike, but it was. And he's behind quickly 0 2. Well, so far, what we have seen between Correa and Hernandez has been the best cat and mouse we've seen so far here in this tournament. Yeah. See if he gets him to go after one or just comes after him. 0 2 delivery. Felix Hernandez came inside. Didn't go around on it. They checked down at first. Low of the first base umpire said no. And a one ball, two strike out. Yeah. You know, Carlos Carras got to be thinking. He's got the great opposite. He showed me a slider. Now he showed me a change up down in the zone. But I'm convinced he does not want to lose this battle with a fastball. Those are swinging. Big hole between first and second. Altuve way over to the bag. Jammed him. Pitching to the D. And it'll be fouled off the. Overhang roof upstairs and will hold the count of the ball and two strikes. This Venezuelan team, as uh, we're looking at the makeup of their roster, every player in Ven for Venezuela was born in Venezuela. You don't see that very often. You know, Puerto Rico's got seven players who were born outside of Puerto Rico. One ball, two strike count, two away in the dirt. Again, Perez down to block it, holds the runners. And a pretty good eye right there. Correa refusing to chase gets the count to two and two. Boy, these are two really good catchers we're getting to watch in, in this matchup with Molina and Perez. This guy is a wall, a fort. Pitchers can trust they can bounce anything in key situations like this one. Two balls, two strikes. Runners off first and second base. Little roller down to third, takes the short hop, bobble, gets up, throws, didn't get him. Beat it out, that's why you hustle. Correa going down the line, and just the little bobble right there was enough to allow him to reach and load the bases. Pretty much what we saw to finish off that second inning. That last hop is one that's causing a little bit of trouble for some of the Venezuelan fielders, and this one, it does eat up Martin Prado. Unable to recover on time. And throw out Correa, great hustle all the way around. And that's one thing that his manager talked about today. Their youth really brings a lot of motivation, a lot of energy. Yep. And they play extremely hard. We've seen it here. Prado charged with an error. That'll load him up. Well, here's the matchup you've been waiting for. They'll try and at the plate against. Felix Hernandez with the bases loaded with one run in for Puerto Rico here in the third inning. One pitch or one location here for Beltran. Who's looking for Beltran waiting on it. It'll be away. And a 2 0 count with no place to put him. An interesting inning. Getting on base with a triple single, walk, and an error. And a run on a sack fly. Man. Felix Hernandez trying to work his way out of it. He'll step off. Once the signs again, stepping out. Now trying at the plate. Duo delivery on the way, Beltran, an off speed breaking ball. And that's not there. And the count goes to three and oh. He has had to nibble a little bit more. And the bullpen, the double barrel action. Just in case the inning continues on. 3 0. He took it and an RBI on a bases loaded walk. 
And Puerto Rico's got a 2 0 lead. Fuentes, who picked up a single, will score from third base. And after the six straight outs in the first two innings, a whole different look for Felix Hernandez here in the third. He had not allowed a run, single run in eight and two thirds innings, only five hits coming into today in WBC play. And the different challenges we expected is really confronting him right now with this thick Puerto Rican lineup. And they have been extremely disciplined second time around. He's done. How about that? 51 pitches thrown. And they did not get the innings out of Felix Hernandez they were hoping for. You want at least three. But Omar Vizquel, he made a sign when he came out uh, to the bullpen. And yeah, he's going to follow through with it. After a little conversation with Felix Hernandez. So the surprises continue in the WBC as Felix Hernandez is knocked out of there in the third inning. King Felix is out, Jose. He is out 51 pitches, which means he cannot be used for another four days if they advance. This third inning just did him in. That ball reached for that's the leadoff triple Rosario got he would score the first run on the sacrifice fly Rivera got now here is Infante this is not the way uh, Venezuela wanted this pitching to go Shasin was going to be the number two pitcher he was going to use two starters if he could get the innings out of Felix Hernandez he didn't so now he's got to go to Infante in kind of an unplanned plug in here and Infante's problems have been about control. A lot of walks. Now there's a strike throwing situation. And that one is going to miss inside. The more you nibble, the better it is for the hitter. And as mentioned earlier, it is remarkable how much, even after Pagan struck out on something out of the zone, Lindor patient. Costly error on Correa's ball, but certainly patient for Beltron, too. Yeah, Adia Molina, big chance. Eddie Molina puts the ball in the air center field and Ciarte's turned around heading back got it lined up and hauls it in 400 feet away to dead center Molina's out of there that's the deepest part of the ballpark but two runs score they do it on just a, a couple of hits an error a walk sacrifice fly all of that in the inning and almost almost had the salami but not quite. So Lugo the 27 year old right hander who's retired nine in a row goes back to the top and here's Altuve and almost caught him on the hand Altuve popped out his first time up Lugo takes the mound here with a two nothing lead after three two two and oh for his ball club oh oh and one this will be as well this will be Gary Lugo's biggest test second time around this lineup now once I hit the short but takes the big hop Lindor's up with it makes the throw and Plenty of time. Yes, it might be only early March, but you talk about pride and caring. This is not just another game. Look at Yadi Molina's reaction after flying out to deep center field. Look at this. Love that. Huh? What that represents? Yeah, and that's the way they play. I mean, if people who have not watched the WBC in the past, this is what the WBC is all about. It's about the intensity and emotion that these players bring to these games. They are. I mean, they are in it. Pitch will be taken for a strike. And as manager Adrian Rodriguez pointed out to us, I have a vocal leader in Yadi Molina, and I have a quiet leader who's a little bit of a jokester in Carlos Beltran. And not a bad idea to have both. That pitch aimed for the outside corner. That one is going to be missed. Zomar Vizquel put it to us today. Some of the appearances by teams from Venezuela in past years they just didn't understand what the competition was going to be like they thought it was be like spring training baseball and he said and his words were what they found out is this is real and that's what he's tried to impress on his ball club. this is real that's why he was so impressed with the group they got together in the Florida area yeah. and they themselves organize Structured workouts. They had a mini camp, as he put it, that was voluntary on their part. <laughs> and, and he said it really helped to 
bring some chemistry. So interesting. He goes, well, the word got around and guys started flying from all over the country. Yeah. The guys had T-shirts printed out, shorts printed out with their uh, logo and everything. Not Lugo, logo, but logo. Thank you. Sir. Two ball, two strike count, one away here in the fourth inning. Martin Prado, strikeout victim, will go to short. Hit pretty hard. Worm eater. Lindor's up. They got him. Oh, well, we were talking about the defense that we were going to see in this infield, and it's showing up. That is five consecutive ground balls for Seth Lugo. And why not just once in a while turn around and watch his play behind you? <laughs> he is quick. He covers a lot of territory, and he's got an arm. Look at the angle. He knows he cannot be covering and playing this ball as if he was a natural turf. Look where he makes his throw from behind the cut. All because he has to create more angles playing on the turf. Okay. Here's Cabrera flying out to left field his first time up set up. Ball a little more inside than Molina wanted but it is in there for a strike. So what does that mean creating angles. Well the natural turf you know the grass the inner grass is going to slow the ball down does you more aggressive on your first step and quickness. Here you have to get a read to make sure anything going side to side left or right doesn't go by you because you're cutting across and not allowing yourself to take the right angle going back. Miggy Cabrera with two down and nobody on. Lugo with a 1 0 1 pitch and that one's going to miss 1 1. You also saw on that play with Lindo Jose we always talk about the clock in the head that infielders have to have in order to be good. He's got the clock. He knew who was running. He took three steps. I mean, usually you wouldn't do that, but he knew the batter was not going to get there very quickly, so he made sure, took the extra time to get himself set, and made the throw. And that's that internal clock that great infielders have, where you'll see so many plays at first base where they get them by one step. And you say, well, gee, why didn't they get them sooner than that? Well, they knew they didn't have to. So they take time to make sure that the throw is going to be good. And he's got that. They understand also how to save the arm when they yep. need to. Yep. Because of that. Two ball, one strike count. I think he will take the pitch inside, breaking ball. And we'll get ahead on the count here, three and one. You know, going back to that point, Gary, that you make is so interesting. And for a young player to understand it, it takes a while. Yeah. You have to pay attention. Those are pretty good numbers. <laughs> He's done a little damage throughout his career. Here's the 3 1 delivery on the way and a ground ball towards the middle. Let's see if he's got an arm. Nope. That one gets bobbled by Baez. And there's the first base runner for Venezuela as Cabrera will reach and we'll see if they give him a hit or an error on that. I'm going to guess hit. There's one where Javi Baez himself, with his reaction, just uh, let us know he tried to just be way too quick. He's looking at first base, of course, as getting farther and farther from him without having the baseball. Watch his eyes come up, and that's where he's not following that ball all the way into the glove. So the first base runner is Cabrera. Biggie's telling him over there, what are you doing behind the bag? <laughs> that should have been a clean hit through to center field. Not going to get much through this infield if they can get to it. It is a base hit. And the pitch is there for a strike. Gonzalez, Carlos Gonzalez, grounded out his first time up. This man has one of the most beautiful swings in baseball. The swing that when it first got to the big leagues was swinging and missing a lot. He will get around on that one, and it is going to be a foul ball. So Lugo again getting ahead on the count here as it goes 0 and 2. Gonzalez, one who really loves playing in the classic, and said before this World Baseball Classic got underway, he thinks it puts players a step ahead of everybody else when they go back to spring and when they get ready to start the season. Yeah, that's a superstar saying that. Yeah. Uh, speed delivery is going to be taken outside. He said most players we got to got to switch the chip when it starts. We already did that when we played in the WBC. So and he thinks you come out of here in game ready condition. And he's one of those players that took part. Yep. And that camp here's Yadier insisting. Hey, this one I want you to miss. Let's go. He didn't like it. Guess what? The message very clearly. 
In other words, she's not going to give him the margin to miss again or have any doubt. Yeah. When I say, <laughs> I want you to miss here down with that breaking ball, finish your pitch. You see, not only does he work with the pitcher, he's also working the defense. One ball, two strike, count two away. Cabrera first base, they're not going to hold him. And that's why he was already off the bag. He was able to make the easy play. How about Yachty? Yep. He told him to get off. Coming your way. <laughs> Rivera plays it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning, a 2 nothing lead, Puerto Rico. For Venezuela, Gregory Infante came on a third of an inning, got out of the last one. Now Chassin, they're kind of back to where they wanted to be with their pitching. Here are the numbers for him with the Braves and the Angels. Six and eight mark. Four eight one ERA. And Jolie Charcine will start it out after eight came to the plate in the third inning. Javier Baez, the only batter who didn't for Puerto Rico, leads it off here. You know, this is not a bad thing overall for Omar Bisco because of the luxury he has of having somebody like to see because it was designed to go. That will go to third base and the pop up handed. Handled by Martin Prado. Baez is retired 0 for 2 in the game. Hey Gary, it's pretty much a message to everybody. By the way, nice job, Infante. Get me out of the oh, inning. Came in through strikes. But uh, it's, let's start again. Justine, if he is on, and he needs to be on here, is a good sinker baller. He has to live off movement. He cannot be too fine, and his catcher cannot be moving around too much. But we'll see a big difference when he throws a slider. He grips it so tight at times, hitters think it's a changeup. Going after the first pitch again, Rosario had a triple and scored his last time up, and that's playable. Wynn kind of moving that around, but Martin Prado stayed with it. So a couple of the air to third, and a couple of very quick outs here for Chassin. Boy, the managers weren't kidding when they told us before the game, both of them, we're going to be aggressive at the plate. These guys have come up first ball hitting on both sides. And yeah, how many times was each manager asked about, did you watch last night's game? Did you yeah. see the ball fly out of here? Of course they did. Yeah. <laughs> Omar Vizquel actually said, we were watching that game on our flight from Arizona. Yeah. Yes. He goes, by the time I fell asleep on the plane, and woke up was like what, what happened what happened Italy a tremendous comeback two down nobody on here's Rivera picked up the sack fly to drive in the first run the other RBI the Beltran bases loaded walk so for Felix Hernandez two and two thirds innings two runs two hits two walks and three strikeouts for the starter Pitch is going to miss for a ball. Great target by Salvador Perez. My God, I was outstanding. Both catchers just teaching all of us on what it is like to call a game. Gold glove winners, both sides behind the plate, four in a row for Perez. Little number off the end of the bat with some spin on it. Altuve makes the play, and that's about as quick as you can do it. How many pitches did he throw? Somebody give me a number. Come on. Six. Huh? Six? Six? Let's see. You think so? Was it six? Yeah. Confirmed. A very good guess. It was six, Jose. Congratulations. Good off. Yes, I may go. <laughs> six pitch inning. <laughs> Beautiful stadium. Jalisco is the name of the state, and this is Jalisco's baseball stadium. Just outside of Guadalajara, the capital of Jalisco. And a beautiful ballpark and a real good ball game underway. 2 nothing lead. Puerto Rico on top. Story of the game's on the mound right now. The 27-year-old from the Mets, Seth Lugo. One major league season, only a part of that under his belt from last year. Victor Martinez will take the pitch and it will miss. Martinez grounded out his first time up. Lugo, interesting story himself. 34th rounder back in 2011. Mm. Out of... Uh, Louisiana and he said well I was just hopeful that any team will pick me up whoever it was I just wanted to pitch professionally well he had the breakthrough year last year and the Mets saw him on a showcase give him a little tryout they liked what he saw and look where he is and he really surprised so many people with the Mets last year especially in September where he went 3 and 0 with a 2.76 ERA he has given up just one hit. He has one strikeout. Hasn't walked anybody. Pitches there for a strikeout. And what we're going to talk about a little bit as we go along with Lugo, he is not using his best pitch. He's got a great curveball. Yes, but because does. of the high altitude and the thin air, pitchers have a very hard time getting a grip when they're trying to throw any kind of breaking ball. So he's had to adjust. And we were checking between innings. 
He's throwing a majority of sinkers. Sinker slider change. How about that's not him? That's a tremendous tribute to him. It is. And one of my points was find and get a good feel for your curveball early. Why? Because you don't want to force it just because it's in the books as your best pitch. If you don't have it, if the thin air does not allow you to get the break or the spin or the grip, don't force the issue. But then you got to have something else to go to and be confident enough, and he has, and look what he's doing. Gets a strikeout. But Martinez retired two Ks on the board for Lugo. They're hoping to get 12 outs out of Lugo today. And look where they're at right now. One down in the fifth. Look at this outstanding changeup. He is really pitching. Credit to uh, Eddie Rodriguez talking about Lugo. He was confident, confident. You could tell the way Rodriguez was talking about him. He saw something in him in the way he performed last year and the way he performed getting ready that made him believe this was the kind of outing he would get from him. It'll be a total asset. What a luxury just to get two more outs out of him. Yeah, absolutely. Pitch is going to be there for a strike. Now we're seeing uh, both the first batter in the inning, Victor Martinez and now Salvador Perez. They're resting the bat a little bit. They're trying to get some pitches thrown here by Lugo to get him out of there. But he's not giving him much of a chance because he's thrown strikes. That's a good point. I mean, there's a time in which veteran hitters will go, well, let's work on uh, getting the pitch count up. But he is not allowing you to do that. He's you missing close enough where you think it's hittable. It's moving out of the zone. And keep in mind, how important it is to have somebody that's quite economical as Lugo has been in this first round. It's that pitch count all important. That one is going to skip on the ground outside to Perez who popped out his first time up. Well, Gary, you know who gave me the best scouting report on Seth Lugo today? Bartolo Sexy Six Cologne. Zone. Oh, the big sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Bartolo said, hey, he is not afraid and watch the changeup. He was right. Hit hard to the hole. Oh, that's a reach and a catch. Correa. The only way he was going to get that was to make the dive. It's one or none, and it was one. And Perez is retired. Run prevention on display here. And Lugo throwing once again to that defense. Correa sacrificing that body. He has some issues with that left shoulder last season. And look at both of them on that ball. Automatically, nice reaction. That's what we were talking about. Throwing that ego out the door and say, I'm going to move to play third base. So there are two down. Herrera grounded out his first time up, and he will take the pitch for a strike. Herrera has never played any place but shortstop. So the big question coming in with all these shortstops, Correa, Lindor, Baez, who was going to play short? And then where would the other guys play? Well, they, they didn't really have any trouble. They all agreed on what they wanted to do. And it's paying off. And the Indians were also very clear and explicit. We want Lindor to play shortstop or DH. Mm -hmm. And Aaron Rodriguez said, I have no problems with that. And the rest of the guys said, fine by us. Gold Glover, fine by us. Daniel Herrera and that one will be down low two down nobody on here in the fifth inning two nothing lead Puerto Rico they got it in the third they are two two and oh oh one and one for Venezuela being held down by Lugo hasn't walked anybody and has struck out two. and find a way to get to this right hander or probably better yet at this point get him out of there two ball one strike count with two away. And that one's going to be up and away. We'll bring Molina up and uh, out in front of the plate. Very interesting point on Lugo. You talk about the efficiency of the off speed and also when he shows a fastball. Left handers hit only 196 against him. Right handers 44 points higher at 240. Now Molina, I guarantee you, uh, just by his actions, he thinks Lugo may be getting uh, towards the end. That's why he came out, stepped out. You saw him look over into the dugout. And now he's going to come out and make sure. You know what Yadi has always been very good with is going back to the David Tony of Russo, who adores him. 
for many reasons. He'll let you know when that arm starts dropping. He's got the best angle to let the manager and pitching coach go, you know what, that elbow's dropping, and only tells me one thing. Getting tired. Yes. Not to say it is the case here, but he does have a good idea. Yeah. You know, there's so many outstanding pitchers he has caught. And what's happening? He's got a three ball, one strike count here. Looking for one to hit, put it up in the air. Go to center. Montez drifts back. He's got it. And Lugo continues. May have been a little tougher, but it's still a one, two, three inning with a little help from his D. Perez, the fine play made at third base. Puerto Rico remains on top of Venezuela. Two, nothing. Great to have you with us, Gary Thorne, Jose Molina. We're in Mexico, just outside of Guadalajara. Beautiful weather, beautiful ballpark, great games. 16,000, uh, 14,000, 296 last night. And they filled the ballpark up again tonight. There we go again. It's a late arriving crowd on this Friday night. But uh, there are as many, if not more, here tonight, even though it was Mexico playing against Italy last night. We've got a full house here. And they were quite loud also during introductions. Yeah. See a lot of uh, patriotism come out here with the flags and many that have made their way to Mexico to travel or many that are residents of the country. We have a lot of the Puerto Rican fans directly in front of us and down the left field line. A good number of the uh, Venezuelan fans. Yeah, I just saw an Angels hat. You see that? Yep. Easily recognizable. And they Angels hat. So some Felix fans with the uh, M on uh, the Mariners hats here. I'm not biased or anything. Well, hey, who signed your check? Let's so just the, get it out of the so way. The, so the you Orioles. I mean? yeah. So are the Orioles. That's the loyalty is. That's right. <laughs> two ball, two strike out. Fuentes. He'll take the pitch. Wanted to get the call. Chasin was leaning in, didn't get it. Fuentes delivered a single, scored in the third inning. They got two runs, two hits in the third, left the bases loaded. It's a good running fastball. Quinn Wilcott will have to himself get educated with that type of late movement. That's very important there, too. Chassin with a 3 2 delivery on the way, and he was really late on the cut. Gets the strikeout for Chassin. That'll be his first K. Gary, he can fool you in so many ways. And once again, it could be a right hander or it could be a left hander because he overgrips that slider. And here's the last inning. Look at this slider here. He totally grips it so hard. Look at the ball spinning right off the end of the bat. Not a great location, by the way, but because there's so much separation between his fastball and that slider, most guys think it's a changer. Has some spin. You're right about that. Pitch taken outside for a ball, top of the order. And El Pagan standing in. Pagan has struck out twice. Hernandez had three strikeouts. Chassin has picked up one. That ball driven in the air left center field and it'll move towards left and stay up. Herrera's there to get it. When two center fielders converge, the ground is covered. Great jump by Odubel Herrera himself. And also the angle that he had a little trouble with earlier and that ball coming back on him. He read it exactly right. Never been in left field in a major league game. He's out there making decisions on which way that ball's coming and you learn in a hurry when you got to make the plays no. and he has twice no. once going the other way and once right there a little ground ball that'll hit the first base. I mean a slow roller tag is put on Lindor as he was going by by Cabrera. So a one two three inning and Chassin gets it done in a hurry and at the end of five Puerto Rico still on top a two nothing lead over Venezuela. There's a little interesting thing going on. Lugo came out to pitch, completed his warm-ups, and then the manager came out to make the pitching change. Now, I don't know, but I think the umpires are telling me he can't do it. That he's got to throw a pitch. In order, see, see right there? He's got to throw one pitch because he completed his warm-ups before they can take him out. And he also has a reliever that just approached the mound. And again. Lugo has still five pitches to work with within the WBC first round regulations. But if this next at bat goes beyond 65, it's all just fine, too. Let's see that very often. The relief pitcher just went into the dugout. There he is right there. See Soto? 
Soto was going to come on and pitch for Lugo. He was already on the field, ready to take over. And then the umpire said, "No, no, you can't do that. You let him. You let him come back out to warm up. He's got to throw at least one pitch. He's up to 60. Is what Jose is talking about here in the first round to the limit. Now he could leave him in there if he throws a pitch and gets an out. He could leave him in there, Either face way. another batter. If he gets that guy out, he could Keep take another one. Keep saving your bullpen. Save your bullpen. <laughs> They're right on plan they, with what they wanted to do. There you see the rest restrictions. Pitch two days in a row. One day rest, 30 pitches. A day's rest, 50 plus four days rest. Anything's possible with Lugo. He only needed six pitches to get three outs in the second inning. Yeah. And you're allowed to go over the count if you're facing your final batter, if you've already started working on a hitter. So let's see. A strike taken. Alcides Escobar leading it off. Venezuela trying to find a way to get something going. Miguel Cabrera picked up a single in the fourth inning. That's the only hit that they have had and the only base runner they have had. An amazing performance by Seth Lugo. Escobar grounded out his first time up. He's faced 16 hitters and retired 15 of them. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way. Swing and a miss. Helping him out right there to pitch up. Yes, he is. I mean, Venezuela can go out here with the idea of, oh, you know what? He's going to get out of there eventually. Let's take pitches. Get the pitch count up. But also, he's been around the zone, so why waste anything that looks good to hit? 1-2 delivery on the way. That'll be fouled back into the screen. By the way, during the uh, so-called, let's say so-called, <laughs> pitching change, we heard from Bartolo Colon, who was watching the game and saying, that changeup, as we told you, as he told me, is what he's going to, and he's not afraid to repeat it. Bob Martolo leading the Mets again starts innings and wins last year. Throwing strikes at the tender age of 42. And he got him on a strikeout, foul tipped, and it's held on to. Alina had that one snow coned on the end of the glove. So Lugo is done, but what a magnificent job he has done. And they're all coming in. From the infield to congratulate him and the fans on their feet and applauding this 27 year old right hander. What a great moment for this youngster to go out there and carry the flag onto the mound. And Yadi Molina just looks like a proud papa, like a proud brother. Look at that. Great moment for Puerto Rico, and they got way more than they, anybody expected out of Luca, but uh, not of what he expected out of himself. Brilliant job. Five and a third innings, one hit, two strikeouts. Giovanni Soto, the left-hander, with one down here in the sixth inning, comes on. And Ciarte will be in at the plate, and the pitch taken for a ball. So the job done by Seth Lugo. He will now watch. That is a masterful performance. Absolutely setting the tone for his team. 25-year-old left-hander delivers sweeping motion. That's going to miss down low. We thought coming into this game that Seth Lugo was going to outpitch Felix Fernandez. Eddie Rodriguez thought that. <laughs> Perhaps he did. And apparently Lugo thought that too. <laughs> there you see the numbers Soto has put up. Appearing uh, for the Cubs AAA team in Iowa. Gets that one in for a strike. He's been selected off the waiver by the White Sox in November. So Soto is now with the White Sox. He is the second Giovanni Soto to play for Puerto Rico. Other was a catcher. Giovanni Soto. Giovanni e. Soto. Oh. Yes. Down to third base hit. Great back control. Inciarte just took it where it was and found a hole. That's the second hit. Good one. On. Here for this Giovanni Soto. What a trek from the bullpen to the mound, eventually to the dugout. But how many times do you see this? A reliever that is not coming in from the bullpen, but from the dugout. All because of the miscommunication and uh, the rule. Explanation and translation with Edwin Rodriguez. Yeah. Starter had to throw one more pitch at least, steady through to one more batter and get a strikeout. So, runner on. This is just a 2 0 ball game. So the potential tying run is at the plate. And the pitch is going to be taken way inside. Not a bad idea against Jose Altuve, who loves to unload on the first pitch. Altuve has popped out and grounded out. 
you got to believe there's a little boost given to Venezuela by the fact that Lugo is out of there, even though Soto comes on with some decent numbers. I want to see something different, different challenge to yeah. get the uh, headache out of the way. And that one is going to be taken up high. And there's more pressure on Soto than anything else you'd expect. And he's fallen behind on the first two hitters that he has faced. Never a good idea. 2 0 count. And Ciarte at first, good speed. And a decent lead over there. Altuve could handle the bats, got a big hole between first and second base. Time out as for Benji, uh, Benji, Jose, but this Yadier, outstanding trio of brothers. He sends something, and immediately he goes out there and takes control. Concern at the shortstop. <laughs> Lindor moved in with him to see what was going on. You know what thing with the Molina brothers? And they've been known, of course, all have won rings, World Series rings, but they'll they've been known to go to the mound and go, hey, what's two plus two? Nothing about mechanics, yep. nothing about pitching or selection, just going, just relax, man. Just break it up. What's two plus two? Two all count runner not going anywhere. That'll be in the outside corner for a strike to. Jose Altuve, two and one. Jose Molina is part of the Puerto Rican staff. Great baseball mind himself. So to me, future major league manager Jose Molina. Tony La Russa could never say enough about game managing done by Molina. In every aspect, Tony used to say Molina could cover it from behind the plate. How about that pitch? Talk about a throttle back job. Mm. Two and two. Two was saying, wait a minute. He threw a little bit firmer than uh, what we saw from Lugo, but that was a great late breaker. Both bullpens now, you can figure, are going to have people up getting ready to go. Jimenez warming up in the bullpen. You've got to get people ready at this point of the ballgame. Soto's delivery went back outside and will miss with it. So the count goes to three and two on Altuve. And then Ciarte down at first, checking over third to see whether or not they want him running or not. This could play very well into Venezuela's hands right here. They're sensing a guy that uh, is not as comfortable delivering the baseball. Pounding the zone. 3 2 count. Runner not going. And a walk. Way inside. Bounced it. The Soto. Trouble with the first two batters as they reach. First walk picked up by. Venezuela in the game puts runners on at first and second base down to nothing. They finally get something going here in the sixth inning and that's going to result in a visit to the mound now as they try and find a way to protect this lead. Ricky Bone is an experienced pitching coach experienced pitcher himself in the big leagues. He's always been part of that group of the Molinas and Pedro Rodriguez. Uh, just to keep uh, the flow and the wavelength of communication throughout even a non WBC year you have these guys talking all the time they talk about the roster they talk about philosophy all those things that uh, Edwin mentioned to us today yep and Ricky Bonas gets it set with the whole infield having come on to talk about it and Venezuela's got a chance first runner they've had to second base in the game they only had one runner before it was Miguel Cabrera and that Squiver hit in the fourth inning. Nope. Altuve is the guy that sets the tone, and hopefully they'll use that walk to put some runs on the board. That's the way you're thinking if you're Venezuela at this point. Martin Prado, 75 RBIs in 153 games with Miami. He gets an RBI chance right here. Baez moves in close at second to try and hold the runner, and the pitch will be away for a ball. As this is the third hitter Soto has faced, and he's not been able to throw a first strike. Here, this is where you as a hitter tell yourself, you know, your zone is so tight. Do not, do not be tempted to help the guy out by expanding your zone. Veteran Prado, 33 years old, 12th big league year, down to third. Fair ball, knocked down, great play. They're going to one hopper and get the out at first base. Correa going to the line, hauled it in. The only chance he had was to get the runner at first base, and he used that artificial carpet for the one hop to get it there. 
It's just a knowledgeable, instinctive player and play by Carlos Correa. His second outstanding play. One going to his left, this one going to his right. He saves perhaps a couple of runs, but just to have the smarts to go, you know what? I'm not as familiar with this corner here. Let me just use this turf to my advantage. How about that? And that results in the intentional pass being surrendered to Cabrera. They will give him the intentional walk to load the bases. And the Venezuelan well, fans are not too happy here. With Gonzalez instead of Cabrera. And obviously the new rule going into effect in the major leagues is not in effect here in the WBC where you hold the four fingers up. Don't blame them. They want to see maybe hit. Whoa! And see, that's why some want to keep it in. Sometimes throwing these intentional passes gets real interesting. You get wild pitches, pass balls, pitches close enough the guys swing and hit them. That's happened a few times before. Look at Yachty. Follow me, please. Yeah. There you go. All right, they're loaded. Big moment in the ball game. And Ciarte with a base hit is down at third. Altuve the walk at second, and now the intentional pass to Cabrera puts him at first base. And Carlos Gonzalez will come to the plate. He has grounded out twice. A 2 0 lead. Puerto Rico getting their runs in the third inning. And the Beltran bases loaded walk and a sack fly. And it was picked up for the first run by Rivera. And now Venezuela trying to answer back. They sit here to tie it up or better. And Carlos Gonzalez. Very comfortable hitting against lefties. Of those 25 home runs last year with the Rockies, 10 came against lefties. Against whom he held a very decent 273 average. Real good number for a lefty on lefty. The cat and mouse again being played with Soto and Gonzalez. Base is loaded, two down. High hold, long time. Wow. That's a grand slam rip taken right there on that first pitch. Quite the display here in batting practice from line to line. Outfield will play it deep, as will the infield. This artificial carpet is quick. The ball tends to skedaddle when it's hit hard. So it's second and short here. You got Lindor and Baez. Playing in the outfield, both of them. Ooh, wow. almost got an RBI the hard way. And Benji Molina has given it some real. I don't like this attitude behind the plate. He is. He's got body language. It's not where he wanted it. Yeah, Yadier. He came. Look at him. He looks back and then he kind of lobbed the ball back out with a "let's go" kind of attitude. One ball, one strike delivery. Gets ahead on the count. Tony LaRusso, for years, was able to read what was going on with the pitcher just by looking at Yadier Molina's body language. Jose Molina with the watchful eye. <laughs> and his little brother. Well, Benji and Jose Molina told me years ago, oh, the best one of us is coming and that's Yadier <laughs> they were both right on the money one ball two strike count two down Gonzalez has got six grand slams in his career got a shot at one right here one two delivery oh what a pitch off speed delivery Molina just steps on the plate where there's a force out since he dropped it and Soto gets out of the inning and Molina goes right to him his way to go baby no runs one hit no errors the bases are left loaded Puerto Rico 2 nothing over Venezuela well Gary and Parks thanks to the WBC we have seen these numbers expand more and more on 2016 opening day rosters and activists all throughout baseball look at the spread wonderful thing game girls worldwide led by the DR as you would expect Baseball has a long history. First pitch is swung on and missed. There are the uh, 
brothers Molina, Yadi, vocal leader, Jose himself, fairly quiet but both quite knowledgeable. Yep. Correa at the plate, Carlos Correa. And interesting that the pitching coach is now talking to the pitcher Soto. He's talking to Yadier. Yeah, Ricky Bonas. Yeah. Want to look at an MVP of this game right now? Lugo, starting pitcher, would be one of them. The guy at the plate's another. Never played third base. Run professionally. Prevention. Holy moly! Huge. Towering fly ball to center. Wind is not blowing it, but it's back. And goodbye, home run. That baby kept on going about 430 feet away. More MVP in this game than ever. Correa gets the dinger, and it is 3-0 Puerto Rico. Oh, save of the moment. This is a superstar on display on every side of the baseball field. It's been quite a nice matchup, pitch by pitch, from what we saw early in the game. And he goes down and gets a very good sinking fastball, out of you've seen, but uh, has way too much leverage, power, pop, explosion, and bat speed coming out. Tremendous blast, wind or not. Yeah. And it didn't matter which ballpark that was hit in. It's a long way out there, 410 to dead center field, and he was just to the right of that. The Chassain gives up the home run. And that's three runs on three hits. RBIs off a bases loaded walk that Beltran got. RBI sack fly by Rivera. And now the home run by Correa. And the pitch will be taken down low. Beltran drew that bases loaded walk in the third inning. And for Eddie Rodriguez, the skipper of Puerto Rico, this game is kind of going to Hoyle just the way it was. Put on paper, which doesn't necessarily happen very often in a ball game. Big shift on here. That's going to be called on the inside corner for a strike two and here one. Also, let's keep in mind as the outs keep progressing and Puerto Rico keeps adding momentum, the faces get longer and longer over in that Venezuelan dugout. Yep. They're looking to rebound here. Eddie Again. Rodriguez, we told we we talked about this ballpark. The fact balls fly out of here. Asked you about did you consider that in selecting your pitching staff? And he said, yes, I did. I know this ballpark. So the last four spots on the roster for pitchers, I went after ground ball pitchers rather than guys who may have had better numbers and more experience. I wanted guys at the end I could bring in who would get ground balls in this ballpark. And again, he took his team to the finals last time. He understands the structure, what it takes, how to build it. You know that concept now of power arms late in games that was not important to him yeah it's getting outs it's getting grand balls it's keeping a guy for more than a batter or more than one inning yep exactly power arm did not matter on how he built his bullpen it's a pretty interesting way to structure a little chopper is going to go foul off the bat of Beltran who has flied out as well as picking up that bases loaded walk it's been a game of pitching and defense Three nothing lead Puerto Rico but we've only had a combined five hits in the game only one error has been committed big chance Venezuela six inning left the bases loaded they've stranded only four in the game they've actually stranded more than uh, Puerto Rico Puerto Rico's left three on. and there's a walk with nobody out Beltran draws his second free pass first one surrendered by Chassin. So a base runner at first and uh, Molina coming up. Molina has struck out and flied out. Infield will play a double play depth. Speaking of the hoped for ground ball. I say keep the pressure on. Get some runners in motion. Yachty handles the bat very well. And we can know the ground balls go through this infield very quickly. He had no intention of swinging at that pitch. He let it go by on the inside. He keeps speaking at Carlos Beltran. And you know, they'll be shocked. I mean, there's been times when Molina himself will put on some plays. Yeah. Yep. Taking again. It's a strike on the outside corner, though. Yeah, out here now, 34 years old. Still makes his home in Puerto Rico. And has just had such an amazing season. Eight time gold glove winner. 
One ball, one strike delivery on the way. That one's going to be taken up high. That one he did want to go after, but backed off. You saw those faces in that Venezuelan dugout. As the game continues to go, more or more pressure continues to add up for them. Yep. Get to that one pitcher per inning situation late in the game. Molina will take that, and that's going to be up high. So Shastain struggling here, giving up the home run a walk, and now he goes three and one on Molina with the Baez waiting on deck. Third pitcher to be used in the game by Venezuela. Yadi Molina will look for one to drive right here. Three one delivery. He got one in the air to right field. That one back. That one's carrying, and that ball is gone. Goodbye. Home run. Taking a bounce out there by the scoreboard. Yadi Molina, a homer and two RBIs, and a five nothing lead for Puerto Rico. Well, Yadi has shown that leadership and the ability to really take control of the game from behind the plate, but mainly with his thump to the opposite field. Well, keep in mind how frustrated he was when he hit that ball to deep center field and didn't carry. He strayed right with it. He got a good count to hit on, and he did not waste it. That is quite a display from a true Puerto Rican leader. He pretty much knew off the bat. That ball was out of here. And Chassin may be out of here as well. Oh, yeah. Savored with a little salsa. <laughs> you and that entire dugout. And that's the kind of excitement you get in all WBC games. What a and contrast from his last at bat, huh? Yep. And Chassin knowing <laughs> all these guys were watching. At least part of yesterday's game, they knew. You miss fly balls, they get elevated, they get backspin, they're going to travel way out of here. 16th WBC game played by Molina. First time he's had a home run in WBC action. Two of them have been hit this inning off Chassin. Correa got the one to lead it off, the walk to Beltran, and now Molina. So bases are empty, three runs are in, still nobody out. Wow. What did he want to do? <laughs> yes. Cork screwed himself right into the ground on that swing. They have he would look for content there. No, he was looking for the cathedral here, Guadalajara. <laughs> huh? Now he bunts and hits himself, and is he out? Did it hit him or nope? He was in the box. One plate umpire Quinn Walcott immediately says he did not. Get hit outside the box with that ball. Oh, you know, Gary, going back to Yadier Molina, and how, what a luxury for your manager to go. I don't even have to call him and ask him if he's playing in the World Baseball Classic. How to bother? I'm there. He, he's going to be there. I'm there. His teammates also know that. Yeah. In fact, he's the one that started this trend with the uh, light hair. Yes. They've all died. Most of them have dyed <laughs> their hair a little bit to make it lighter, just as a team unity thing. Oh, what a he has really bleached his own. Oh, yes. You may like it enough to keep it. I saw this team work out a few days back over in Arizona, and uh, you could see the vibe, the confidence. One ball, two strike delivery on the way to Baez. And Baez late on that one somehow did get a piece of it, fouls it off. Talked about these young players, uh, Lindor and Baez, Lindor the shortstop, Baez at second base. They uh, have known each other since boyhood. They were both born in Puerto Rico. They both moved to Orlando when they were young, and they played against each other in high school. So Lindor and Baez has got a history of friendship that goes way back, and here they are with an opportunity to play for Puerto Rico together. Ground ball is going to go to short. Escobar is up with it. Quick toss over. And there is the first out here in the sixth inning as Baez retires. One uh, thing that, of course, Yadier Molina was talking to me about. He's quite happy because his good friend, Albert Pujols, whom uh, he considers his baseball mentor. If they grew up together in the Cardinals organization, if Albert much advanced, but Albert made his spring training debut for the Angels today. He says he's ready. He's going to be ready. There's no doubting number five. And hopefully a healthy season for the sake of Major League Baseball. Oh, man. There is a great piece of hitting by Rosario. Takes a look at second. He'll come back. He saw. He's done this before. It is at bat. Martin Prado has to play in against him. 
So he has tried to use that to his advantage by driving it into a hole that's bigger because Prado's got no chance to get over there to get it. Look at him. The general manager here, Alex Cora, thinks he's one of the best athletes he has seen in Puerto Rican baseball. It's the ability to do a lot on the field. First tiller, ability to really use the hands, use his feet, use his legs for anything. Maybe a problem up left field. The trainer's on the way out. Herrera don't know what he did, but it was enough to get the trainer to come out. It looks like it's something with that right leg. He's uh, pointing to the leg and he's, as he's coming into and charging that baseball. Not easy on uh, this turf, obviously. Much harder than natural surfaces, as baseball fans have heard so often. And uh, when you go charging, it can be hard on the uh, knees and legs, so he's going to try and run it out here. And, uh, you know, keep in mind, with big league organizations watching so closely, managers do have a sense of tremendous responsibility of also the integrity of keeping these guys on the field and returning them to their teams in a healthy manner. The outfield artificial carpet is old. The infield artificial carpet is new. There Here he is. is. He's already limping. And he's, uh, yeah. That's where he pulled up right there. Really pulled up. In fact, I'm, I, after I saw that, now let me see the replay. Look at this. I'm surprised he's still in the field, but it could have been just a simple cramp yep. that went away. That sure didn't look good, did it? From there, it looked like he was truly hurting. No, he looks all right. Throw over. And Rosario back to the bag. That's it, number five, picked up by Puerto Rico. What an inning there, having two home runs, a walk, and a single. There's only one away. There's never enough runs on the board. You have to respect Venezuela's lineup. Rivera stands in. Rivera will take the pitch for a strike. Sack fly RBI. And he has grounded out in the ball game. Here, what I'm saying, in other words, is you got to treat this like a two-run lead. Can still put guys in motion. Try to create some holes. New York Mets organization, TJ Rivera. Launches that one to center field. And Ciarte going back, going back at the wall. He's got it. Runner was already around second base. So Sario had to hop on the horse and get back to first and made sure he touched second on the way. He did. Followed by Enciarte in center to get that one. Another one that goes about 400 feet. There's so many times when we point out guys make mistakes and wow, what a terrible job of base running. This was outstanding base running. He knows the ball's going to carry. He knows how far he's got to go. And as an outfielder, you know exactly what needs to happen once he catches a baseball. There's two long throws to try to get you out. And Rosario, again, the great athlete, says, I'm going to be riding second base, and there's no chance they get me if I get back in that ball's cup. Backward as fast as he went forward, maybe faster. Throw over to get him back. Fuente is a base hit, a run scored, and he is struck out. A 5 0 lead for Puerto Rico. First game these two teams have played. This is just the second day of this pool that includes Mexico and Italy. Italy with a stunning 10 9 win last night, getting five runs and five hits in the bottom of the ninth inning for the victory. Swing and a miss on that one. We're going to have a double header day. Here tomorrow, it, it does not depend on what happens here. The schedule is set for Saturday. It'll be Venezuela and Italy playing at uh, two o'clock local time, and then Puerto Rico and Mexico play tomorrow night at eight thirty local time. No one delivery on the way, and the pitch will be taken inside for a ball. One on one. Impressive performance by Seth Lugo, the starter. Five and a third innings, no runs, one hit, couple of strikeouts, holding Venezuela down for Puerto Rico. Soto now on. He hasn't given up a run. One ball, one strike delivery on the way. Seems like a long time ago, Felix Fernandez started this game. On Ended up uh, giving up two runs, two hits, and two and two thirds in. Felix went out there and uh, pumped first pitch and strike the first six batters. Uh, 14 pitches in the first inning. Eight 
pitches in the second inning. In fact, he got ahead of seven batters. First seven batters, he was ahead. 0 and 1. Just saying, just come on, giving up two home runs here in the sixth inning. And has struggled getting ahead of hitters. A three ball, one strike count. There are two down here. Fuentes works the count three and one. Still have Martin Prado even with a bag at third. This is a let it fly type of count. And we'll file that one off to take it full. So Rosario will be running with two down and a three ball, two strike count. I'm actually surprised that uh, Edwin Rodriguez has not been a little more aggressive with a couple opportunities he's had and guys running. Cabrera is going to move behind the runner at first base. First baseman with a left hander up there to give him a little more room. 3 2 runner goes and a swing and a miss. Justine will pick up his second strikeout, but it is a three run inning. There were two home runs to give Puerto Rico a 5 0 lead. It started with a leadoff out of Carrera, who delivered a long shot. Then, after a walk, Abby Alina brought him off the bench. A two RBI homer. Puerto Rico's got a 5 0 lead. The Skyver Edit Telecast presented by authority of World Baseball Classic Inc. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. The moment you've been waiting for, the copyright language. Now you can go to bed. No. Good night. You don't. Good night. Just after what happened last night? No. Don't go anywhere. Don't turn on. Here is Victor Martinez. Martinez has struck out and grounded up. The Detroit. Minor League Pitcher of the Year is now on the mound. And you can't miss it. 6 3, 2 20. Joe Jimenez. He is out of Bayamon in Puerto Rico and also a product of the Puerto Rico Baseball Academy. He brings it. Boy, the numbers are quite impressive in the minor leagues. 14 and 6 career, 1.60 ERA, 204 strikeouts in 141 innings. Pitch on the way. That'll be drilled foul. He's got the uh, fastball that's 95 and above and is said to have. I have not seen him pitch before, but apparently what's called a two strike slider that he'll come at you with as a put away pitch along with a fastball. It's a wipeout uh, with all that power in that arm. He's got great command. 40 walks in 141 total innings in his minor league career. That's remarkable for a power arm. Big shift put on here against Victor Martinez. And then we come inside. Martinez has grounded out and struck out. Two hits on the board for Venezuela. A two out single in the fourth inning by Cabrera. And Enciarte got a one out single in the sixth inning. The only chance Venezuela's had to score, and they left the bases loaded in the sixth. Giovanni Soto. Great job getting out of that jam. Two thirds of an inning. A couple of walks, one intentional, a strikeout, a hit. But no runs. The old Ben, but don't break performance. Marvelous. Tigers number five prospect, as you see. Three ball, one strike count. That one's going to be fouled off. You can tell the respect hitters have for the power pitchers. You're seeing Victor Martinez almost start swinging before the ball's released. He knows this guy's got some gas. And also keep in mind where we are in the calendar for these hitters. Yep. It's still March and some guys are going, I know I have to compete. I have the whole country watching. I'm a major league established player and I got to start my swing a little bit earlier. And now if you throw that slider, look out. 3-2 delivery on the way. Ooh. Down on the foot. I think the one that's got the protective shield on it. Got some command issues, but boy, there's a lot of movement. Well, Martinez will walk it off. Quinn Walcott, home plate umpire, will do what is done. Good to get out there and dust the plate off a little bit, take a little walk. Good to have the thicker protection. Even Molina is going to help out. He took the mask off and said, "You ready to go?" Is Catcher umpire assists the hitter. One current catcher helping a former catcher. Right. 
Victor Martinez designated hitter in this game for Venezuela. 3 2 delivery again and again. We'll foul that one off. Way down that first base side. He's only 22 years old. And with the numbers he's put up, I mean, last year he went all the way through A, double A, triple A. 55 total games. But you see him moving like that, you know he got some stuff. Three and two again. And just missed, and we'll walk. He's one of the toughest guys to strike out. Over 7,200 plate appearances for one Victor Martinez. So a leadoff walk to start the seventh inning. Good eye by Martinez. And that's exactly what Venezuela needs base runners. So with nobody out, they get the leadoff man on. Only the fifth base runner they have had in the game. Perez lined out the third his last time up, and he has popped out. He was denied a base hit by Correa, one of the two fine defensive plays that he's made in the game at third. 0 1 count. Play behind the runner at first. Rivera does. Now moves in front of him. And the pitch, a swinging strike, 0 and 2. You know, Sal Lopez, who's really developed into a hitter in the major leagues, was telling me today, I do not like to take the approach of my mentality as a catcher as to what I might see when I'm hitting. He goes, I get lost trying to do that. <laughs> it's understandable, and it would be tough not to, I would think, as a catcher. You're thinking all the time about how to fool hitter, so why don't you take that to the plate with you and figure out what he's gonna, what's he gonna try to do to fool me? For some guys it works, for others. Yeah. Then while you're doing that, the ball's in the strike zone. It's already gone by. They want a clean slate. <laughs> one two delivery on the way, shattered back ground ball to second base. Played for one, Lindor over to first. They turn two. Silky smooth. Baez to Lindor to Rivera. There was absolutely no rush, but boy, there was some design in that one. You know, they were expecting to do this eventually at some point early in this game. Coming across nicely. Making it look oh so easy. Victor Martinez so far from the bag, he just got out of the way. So two down, nobody on. They're in the seventh inning. Going to bring Herrera to the plate. Herrera, the 25 year old out of San Jose, Venezuela. All star, second in the LB season. That one bounced. He'll do a little dance to get out of the way of that one. 286 last year, a lot of games, 159. Good player. Really developed in the Venezuela League. And all of a sudden, he's playing center field. He's able to switch positions. Steal and a basis and a rule five player. And he was picked up by the Phillies. A rule five from the Rangers in 2014. Rule five is the great fishing pond of Major League Baseball. Oh, there are so many every single year. You go out there and you try and find that big fish in that pond of players available, knowing also that uh, you're going to be sacrificing something. Yeah. It's, a, it's a roster spot in the 25 man roster if yeah. you decide to keep it. You got to keep him or you lose him. You send him back. If you don't have him on the roster, the Rule Five player. One-one delivery on the way. I don't think Herrera's got to worry about that. Nor do the Philadelphia Phillies. We're trying to rebuild, put together a new, a new look ball club. And anytime I can go out there and compliment scouts that do their job and take a chance on players, I will do that. And that is what happened with Herrera. Scouts said, "No, no, it's worth taking him. I like the actions." I like the abilities. Forget the numbers. But yep. this kid will develop. And a chopper. This is going to be a tough play. In fact, there won't be one. That'll be an infield hit. Herrera gets the Baltimore chop in Mexico. His leg is fine, by the way. Yeah, it certainly is. I'm guessing it was only a cramp, but he suffered over there in left field. He ran down the line with no problem at all that time. So they will pick up hit number three. Venezuela will. Herrera gets the single. 
Baez is going to try and barehand it, maybe make a throw, but there's the most concerns of the Phillies. How is he moving? He's just fine. And when you're looking for base runners, it doesn't matter when they come early or late in an inning. Try and get it going. You never know what a little spark like this can get for you. And I think the main thing here for Venezuela, Gary, is to get on the board somehow. Find a way to get on the board and take the load off. I mean, yeah. they're carrying a very heavy one right now. Let's get something started. Escobar has struck out and grounded out the shortstop batting in the number eight spot. Two down. And foul that one off the end of the bat and back into the screen. So three hits on the board for Venezuela, but they've not been able to get anything across. The Lugo who started the ball game retired the side in order, the first nine, then went into the fourth inning and got two more before there was a base runner. Set down 11 in a row before Cabrera got a squiver hit. A one delivery on the way and a swing and a pitch. Looks like it was sliding. That's a slider you're talking about? Yep. Yeah, it, it disappears. Look at Escobar cheating and going, wait a minute. No fastball in? Absolutely not. Slider hard? Yes. Can't reach it. That's a lot of movement. And he's got plenty to work him with here at 0 2. Runner off first base. It's one outside and a one ball, two strike count. Very shallow in left field, surprisingly. Where the ball's been carrying. Here, Escobar being defended. The gun has moved even in from a normal position. Another one of those sliders, this one too far outside. And a two ball, two strike count on Escobar. Game that has been dominated by the overall play. Of Puerto Rico in every way defense pitching offense they've done it all so far in this game and as well as not been able to kick it in gear 2 2 delivery another one way outside runner goes ball got away from Molina and Herrera will get down to second base Fucking Yachty worked way too hard here <laughs> yeah this is where Yachty will hey you know what try easy can we try the easy way the arms there by nothing. Let's try not to be too fine here. Let's get an out. And Yadier Molina understands very well too what it takes to wake up the sleeping giant <laughs> like Venezuela. Yep. So hey, let's try a little suave, my friend. That's a wild pitch. Three two, two down, runner at second base. That one's fouled back. That is perhaps the most confident swing we've seen here all inning. Against Jimenez. I see this joyfully today, uh, sharing with me. Hey, I had two triples off the Royals. I'm so proud of that. An exhibition game a few days back. I can assure you something. I'd like to have one right now. Big, big lead at second or error. They're not trying to hold him close. 3 2 delivery on the way and a change up. No one caught a piece of Molina. He almost hit that one twice so far out in front as it bounded back up and the count remains three balls and two strikes pretty good battle. And Jimenez has had to work for this one as 23 pitches on one it just misses uh, Molina's foot almost looks like a knuckleball that didn't have a lot of rotation on it. It's quite interesting pitch there. Again the 3 2 delivery. Escobar will foul that one back. Came in with some heat on that one. Well, the count remains at three and two, running up the pitch count on Jimenez, the third pitcher used in the game. Yeah, no Puerto Rican pitcher had made more than 16 pitches in one inning. Double barrel action in there, bullpen. Here's the 3 2 delivery again, and this time he gets it. And again, an off speed pitch. No runs, one hit, no errors. A base runner left on at second, seventh inning stretch time. Puerto Rico leading Venezuela 5 0. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Unhelp Pagan will stand in, the leadoff batter. He's struck out twice and has flied out to left field. Pagan, Linda, and Correa do up. 
And a ground ball down to first base on the backhand. Cabrera, pitcher covers. Chassin stays in, and they get the out. Now the ball game that has been dominated by Puerto Rico, starting with Seth Lugo, their pitcher, five and a third, no runs, one hit, and two strikeouts. I mean, he just could not have done more for this ball club. And then in the sixth inning, they find a way to get on the board. Correa had a home run to lead it off, and then Molina with a runner on, delivers a long ball the other way, ended up with a three run, three hit six. You pick that ball eventually, you know they also inspire your offense to say, we have to take care of them somehow. Let's go out there and put some runs on the board and uh, alleviate that load. But uh, boy, talk about setting the tone and giving your manager more than expected. That's what Seth Lugo did for Team Puerto Rico. They're smiling in New York over in Queens where the Mets are. That's who Lugo's pitching for. Also in St. Louis. Yep, where Molina. Strike is in there for a pitch is in there for a strike and Francisco Lindor is at the plate. Lindor's had a walk over two couple of ground ball outs. Correa Beltran Molina middle of the orders done some real damage in the ball game for them. He will take first base. So with one away Puerto Rico gets yet another base runner. Chassin while well he's Still out there has had his problems here since coming out of the bullpen. Correa will stand in. Great day in the field and a home run in the sixth inning. This is where the slider came in and got him in the back knee. First hit batter we've had in the ball game. Correa went down and got a pretty decent sinker off of Jacin to the positive. Deep center field leaning towards right field. That's because that strong finish that he has with those two hands and the powerful backside to apply all that power. One away and a chopper. Play at second. One. No relay. Ball was dropped, but the outs recorded had control of it. And the second base umpire, Dan Bellino, right there to make the call. Oh, Dan Bellino. Does a very good job here staying with the play and taking his time to go. Yep, I did appreciate the fact that he had control of that ball for the correct time. He's out. Flip by Escobar. They got it. One 1,000. Two 1,000. Oops, possession. <laughs> they weren't going to get the out at first base, I don't think anyone. Anyway. I think Jacin thought they might have, but there's yeah. no way. That ball was hit very slowly. They'll try it up. They want to do a switch here in the defense, and they didn't have time to do it in the infield. They bring the third baseman, Martin Prado, over to play the second base position. Altuve, the second baseman, goes back into shallow right field, and that leaves Escobar on the left side of the diamond where he belongs. And the pitch a floater. Take it outside for a ball. Yeah, second base territory is also no stranger to one Martin Prado. Beltran has had two walks, one for an RBI with the bases loaded. Another one he would score after he got on. Officially 0 for 1. He's flied out to left field, the only official at bat in the game. One 0 count with two away. These teams playing their first game here in pool play round robin. Swing and a miss throttle back just enough to keep him out in front of it. You win two games in these in this pool play and you're in pretty good shape. You win three you're going to move on guaranteed. You win two you're probably going to move on. And that's what these teams are after. And the way this whole thing started is uh, of course in the news and the surprises of Team Israel. Only went three and oh you know they advance Israel the Netherlands. Out of the pool they were in. Swing and a foul tip at the plate. Cuba and Japan advance out of their pool, and it took Cuba one swing from the big guy, yep. Alfredo Despain. Grand slam against Australia to stop the Aussies. Those pools had started their play earlier. So Cuba gets Israel in the second round, or Israel gets Cuba, however you want to say it. And Japan takes on the Netherlands. 
little trip to the mound here on the one ball two strike count and a good start for Team USA. It was hard fought Gary but they got it done and somebody that you know very well was a hero for Team USA today in 10 innings. No Adam Jones game, game winner. winner gamer game winner from he a is a gamer and he loves playing in the WBC loves a USA in the front of his uniform there you go pool C. So that sets up the big game that's already been sold out that was sold out before the WBC started. The game between the United States and the Dominican Republic. It's all setting up quite nicely. Yes. The Dominicans wasted no time against Canada. And I guess Jose Bautista hit a ball that uh, they still had not landed over Miami. <laughs> that will be a raucous affair, both in the stands and on the field. And all, I mean that in a very positive way. As the just loaded teams. The Dominican and the USA team. Two ball, two strike count with two down. Runner goes. Gonna throw it down. No chance. They weren't holding him on, so it'll be a stolen base. That's a, just the instincts that we've seen on display here by Carlos Correa. Quite aware of what's going on in his surroundings around the bag. And what you don't see very often anymore from base runners is he walking lead. Mm -hmm. There he is. He's walking, walking, and then take off. There's so much information now given to young players, Gary, that the instinctive part of the game is being taken away from them. In other words, can you do a walking lead? Well, they'll do it against this guy. Learn on the fly. Yeah. Make mistakes. You know, a lot of guys won't run nowadays if a guy's not a 1-3, one, 1-4, one, one, Somebody's tipping at some point when they're going home or when they're going the first yep. find out that ball's in the middle and that's going to be a base hit Beltran's going to pick up an RBI as they'll get on the board so the single is going to add another it is six nothing and that stolen base ends up mattering this is what instinctive players add to your team smart of course talented athletic but they make things happen and leader up to a leader like a Carlos Beltran two feet off of that. And he's been around the game plenty to understand what momentum is all about in this latter part of the game. And he worked it perfectly with a shift on against him. Look at Correa. It's a like game seven for him. Hit him where they ain't. And that's exactly what Beltran did. And that will do it for Chassin. He is coming out of the ball game. Mescal has already come out to get him. Six runs, six hits for Puerto Rico. They extend their lead to six nothing. We'll check the bullpen coming up. They go to the bullpen here, and uh, Dioli Scala, the right-hander, will come on to do the pitching. Runner on at first base. There are two down. A run in here in the seventh inning for Puerto Rico, and Yadier Molina at the plate. Molina with a home run in the sixth inning a three run three hit inning two home runs in it Correa and Molina accounting for those three runs in the inning taking that pitch and it will miss away. Dolly Gary a very valuable arm to the Angels and quite a surprise on how well he pitched last year for a depleted staff. He was one of the bright spots out of the Angels bullpen last year. Twenty seven years old. Pitch taken down low for a ball. Now for Guerra, you would think sometimes that uh, <laughs> he's a lefty lefty guy because his numbers are way better against left handers than against right handers on his splits. Which means he's probably got a pretty good change of outstanding change up. That one's going to be fouled off on the right side. Man you're good. <laughs> well with so much movement going around and shifting and Beltran knowing. <laughs> Professional hitter, this is what you do. You take advantage of where that pitch is going. Now, you have Prado pointing, and then Vizquel eventually asking Escobar as to direction and positioning. And this conversation continue on even after. That ball in the air to center field will stay up long enough. It's going to fall in for a base hit. Takes the big hop on the carpet. So Molina's on. He's two for four. Home run and a single. Beltran will stop at second base. And the inning continues on with two down. That'll be hit number seven. Put on the board for Puerto Rico. 
Chassin worked three and two thirds innings, gave up four hits, a walk, two strikeouts, threw a lot of pitches. He hit a batter. Responsible for one of the base runners on here, so we don't have a final line on him yet. Just seen with a total of 56 pitches, which means he is out for at least four days if they advance. Baez has an 0 for 3. Javier Baez, two on and two outs. And a falling apart on Venezuela. That one's going to be fouled off. Omar Vizquel. So concerned about having them, as he put it, physically and mentally prepared. Which he didn't think is the teams from Venezuela had been in the past. He said, I thought they were, our teams came in about 60% prepared. He said, This year I felt we were up at 100. And he was brutally honest about what has happened in the past and yeah. why Venezuela has not been able to capture a championship. Wow. Reared back on that one. And the extra mustard gets him a swinging strike. It's a place I was talking about with Guerra last year. Left-handers hit only 210 against him. Right-handers 288. Trying to develop something, crossing the play a little bit better. Cut fastball or slider. 0-2 delivery put up in the air into foul territory, and not going to be able to get to it. Cabrera giving it a chance, but with that big foul territory, couldn't get there. That may be getting a little condition again. Last few years, the changeup. It's kind of big. There's always over a span of years or so. There's a pitch that becomes a favorite thing yes. for pitchers around baseball, right? The split fingered fastball for a long time. The fork ball before that. Cutter slider way before that. The cutter with Mariano. The changeup over the last few years has been the pitch everybody talks about. And it's tough to go out there and master it so hard. Yeah. Not to give it away. That ball's going to be to the hole. That's going to be a base hit. Beltran will make the turn. Here's the throw to the plate, way off the mark, backed up by the pitcher. Runners will advance. So Baez gets his first hit of the ball game. It'll be a base hit. He'll be credited with an RBI, and the runners will advance on the throw. Beltran scores. Molina ends up over third, and Baez ends up at second base. Trying to get something out of the zone, crossing the plate as I was. Uh, Referring to against right and they're just not able to have enough lateral movement or depth on that pitch. And quite the errant throw from Herrera from left field. Yep. So Guerra gets touched up. First two hitters have singles off him. That'll close the book. A Chassin, five runs, four hits, three and two thirds innings. Two more in scoring position. Here's Rosario, a triple, a single, and he has popped out. He started out that big third inning for Puerto Rico and they got the two runs on a couple of hits left the bases loaded. A speed delivery in there for a strike here like we saw last night happen happening between Mexico and Italy. This started with a hit batsman. The chopper by Correa with it ended up Phillips choice. It's an out yeah. without somebody on base. Well, no delivery on the way to him. He got a hold of that one. That baby's going into the corner. Two more runs are going to score. Molina and Baez cross easily. He'll go into second base with a double. Where Rosario's having himself a night. Three for four. A triple, double, single. Two RBIs on this one. And keep in mind, this game could be over sooner than thought. Yeah. A 9 nothing lead. Up in the zone with Eddie Rosario once again exhibiting the great ability he has in coordination with those hands to really torque the baseball and torque that barrel. Ten run lead after seven. The ball game's over. That's it. One of the mercy rules, if you will, in order to save pitching when a ball game gets out of hand. We're very close to that right now. We're in the seventh inning. And it is nine to nothing. You see the early termination rule. 
15 run lead after five it's over 10 run lead after seven it's over we're in the bottom of the seventh inning so it could take one swing. Puerto Rico now out hitting Venezuela 9 3. Here's Rivera chance to end the ball game. Two down takes the pitch for a ball. Rivera has faced three and they've all gotten on. Two singles and a double he's given up two runs. This will be taken up high for a ball. It's not the way that Omar Vizquel had thought it would happen. Nor that we thought it would be played in all honesty I, I thought this would be a very tight game. I totally agree with you. Runner off second base 2 0 delivery on the way. That's uh, going to be the ball game. Way back left field and goodbye. Home run. Rivera delivers a 2 RBI shot. And it is 11 to nothing Puerto Rico. And the ball game is over. Just like that one swing celebration at home plate and of course a team that went all the way to the finals loaded up balanced it out guys showed up proudly wearing those colors once again show up here tonight and really send a very strong message from Puerto Rico. Well, we've had two surprises I think it's fair to say here the opening game last night Italy's five run ninth inning to beat Mexico. 10 to 9. They came back twice in that game. Here's a ball game with two teams loaded with names familiar from the major leagues. And instead of Felix Hernandez having the great night on the mound, it's Seth Lugo. He's had only one major league season. Who goes five and a third, gives up no runs, one hit, and has two strikeouts. So Italy has won their first game. Puerto Rico has won their first game. And we end up with a doubleheader, all important games. Coming tomorrow, with Venezuela taking on Italy in the new in the afternoon game, and Puerto Rico playing Mexico in the night game. And for all that and all the planning, it's all about execution and not missing pitches. And I think overall we saw a team today, Gary, that uh, really showed the emotion and you know the drive. It, and a team that his manager, you know, manager described as one that um, it's on a mission. And they wanted to go out here and perform. And I saw how animated they were throughout the workouts in Arizona. Yeah. And how serious they were taking things and how committed they were. And of course, having gone to the finals and remembering that feeling on that field when they lost to the Dominican Republic certainly uh, sets a good tone for them on this start here tonight. Yep, this was a big explosion, and they were able to do everything they wanted. Lugo and Soto were the two pitchers. Puerto Rico wanted to use primarily in the game. They got them both in. They did the job. They uh, had Joe Jimenez come on to finish up what would end uh, would be all they needed. So they ended up using only three pitchers in the game, two of which they intended to use anyway. They're they're really right where the plan was going into game two. And one of the few teams that can actually go out there and say that and yeah. have it execute. Now with all this talk about Puerto Rico and the runs 11 yet, but you know Puerto Rico came into today. With the WBC history of strong pitching all throughout, 2.38 ERA in WBC play since it all started back in 2006. So, brilliant job on what their pitching has done, how they have structured it to allow the offense to do the minimum to go out there and get some W's. Well, they got it done today, so that sets the stage for the doubleheader tomorrow. 11 10 and 0 for Puerto Rico 0 3 and 1 for Venezuela as these two teams open up play here in Mexico with kind of a surprise and our first round here in Pool D will continue Venezuela and Italy will start it out tomorrow afternoon that's going to do it in this one for Jose Mora and all of our crew here in Mexico I'm Gary Thorne great to have you with us everybody Puerto Rico 11. Venezuela nothing the early termination rule came into effect in this game. A do a do all 